The meeting will come to order. We will have invocation by Councilman Tabor and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Rubin. Please stand. Blessings, Father God, on us. Father God, we ask that you bless this meeting. Give us the wisdom we need, Father God. We ask that you bless this parish, Father God, and just control this meeting, Father God, and give us the wisdom we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 To the, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman. As presiding officer and chair, I would like to make the following announcements. This is a public hearing to address the council on any item on this agenda, please fill out the speaker form to submit your information to the clerk prior to the call of the agenda item. Again, prior to the call of the agenda item, or you will not be given the opportunity to speak. Staff assistance is available if needed. Items for submission to the council should be handed over to council clerk, Ms. Veronica Williams, seated to my left. When addressing the council, state your name and title for the official record. The three-minute rule will be in effect. Again, the three-minute rule is in effect. Please, no debating or confrontational statements will be allowed. The front row to my left is for media only. Food and drinks are not allowed in the auditorium. At this time, I ask that you please silence all phones and electronic devices. Meeting procedures are by resolution and not Robert's Rules of Order. All documents with reference to meetings can be found on the LCG website. And finally, the council encourages your invo involvement in boards or commissions. If interested, please call 291-8800. Couple of chair announcements. Due to the Mardi Gras holiday, the council meetings for February and March have been scheduled on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month instead of the first and third Tuesdays. Meetings will return to their typical schedule in April. Item number 13, board appointment, emergency medical services. This item will be deferred to allow additional time for the local area mayors to consult on an appointee. I'd like to wish a happy birthday to our civil service director, Mr. Adam Markentell, which he celebrates on March 15th. One final announcement. Notice is hereby given that at its meeting to be held on Tuesday, April 20th, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. at the Council Auditorium, 705 West University, Lafayette, Louisiana, the Lafayette Parish Council plans to consider adopting a resolution ordering and calling an election to be held in the Parish of Lafayette, State of Louisiana, to authorize the renewal of ad valorem taxes therein. Chair has no further announcements. Any uh, council members have any announcements they would like to make? I, I, I do have another one. Uh, we do have a council member, Mr. A.B. Rubin, who is serving, uh, celebrating 30 years of marriage to a wonderful lady, and uh, certainly we want to congratulate him. Okay, not seeing any uh, announcements from the, the council members. Uh, Mr. Mayor President, uh, the, it's to you. Hold on, let me get, the, get it over to you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to first announce that uh, Mrs. Rubin has the patience of Job uh, to say. <laughs> I got jokes. <laughs> I got jokes. 
<laughs> no, congratulations, Councilman, to you and your wife, and uh, it's a great, great uh, milestone. So we do have budget to actual, Mr. Chair, um, of the major, excuse me, of uh, comparison of major pairs funds for January 2021. Preliminary, Director Toops is behind me and is ready for any questions that the council may have. Not seeing any, we have an announcement, unless V has a question. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Good. Uh, we do have a special person in our audience today. Actually, several sp special people, and I know this young man's father uh, very well, having many cases together and being in the trenches and, you know, family law cases specifically, you know, you have people, good people that sometimes are emotional and not always not always at their, their best um, who they are, but it takes a good counsel of law, attorney of law, to, to be able to be there for their client and be there in an objective manner, but in a loving manner. And I know John Milton is, Reverend John Milton, who's also an attorney and my colleague. But today, we are going to recognize someone uh, that is special to him, his son. And, you know, our parish is blessed. Our great parish is blessed to have amazing people that are willing to answer the call to serve something better than themselves, to make our parish, our community, our state, their particular profession the best that it can be and amazing. So I am thankful and honored to be able to talk about this young man. So today we honor Mr. Antonio Milton, who is a 22-year-old law student who was born and raised in Karen Crow, Louisiana. Hey. What's the, there, you, there you go. What started out as a love of arguing with his father, and I bet very heated but respective, respectively arguing with his father, John Wayne Milton, who is also an attorney, eventually grew into a passion for the law. Antonio is an extremely bright young man who has been on an accelerated path to getting his degree with the Tulane University School of Law. In February... He was selected to be the new editor-in-chief of the Tulane Law Review, which is a very big deal for any law student. And the Tulane Law Review is one of the best in the country. So we congratulate him on this already impressive accomplishment, but also take a moment to celebrate the monumental fact that he is the first African-American editor-in-chief in the 105-year history of the Tulane Law Review. Antonio will have an important role while also doing his regular class work, mentoring first-year law students and inspiring future students to become more active in the law review. All of this being done through Zoom calls and Zoom meetings during the pandemic. So with that being said, Mr. Chair, I'd like to present a certificate of recognition to Mr. Antonio Milton. Let's go. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jeff. Dad, if you want to run up and take a picture, come into the picture. Yeah, mom, mom and dad. See the reason. Congratulations. Good job. Congratulations. That is all we have for the executive report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, President. Joint resolutions. Uh, Cindy, please read. Joint Resolution 7, 2021, a joint resolution of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council authorizing a non-warranty cash sale of 1612th Street to an adjoining landowner pursuant to Louisiana Revised Statute 472202B for the price of the sale's anticipated costs. Need a motion and second. second. Been moved by Mr. Notcan, seconded by Mr. Carlson. Any council discussion? Ms. Williams, any public comment? No, sir. Call for the vote. District 1. 
Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. Joint Resolution 8, 2021, a joint resolution of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council, authorizing a non-warranty cash sale of 615 Lafayette Street to an adjoining landowner, pursuant to Louisiana Revised Statute 472202B for the price of the sales anticipated costs. Need a motion second. Been moved by Mr. Tabor, seconded by Mr. Rubin. Any council discussion? Not hearing any, any public comment, Ms. Williams? No, sir. Call for the vote. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District one? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. Joint Resolution 9-2021, a joint resolution of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council, authorizing a non-warranty cash sale of 2210 Moss Street to an adjoining landowner pursuant to Louisiana Revised Statute 472202B for the price of the sales anticipated costs. Need a motion second. second. Been moved by Mr. Nockhans, seconded by Mr. Rubin. Any council discussion? Ms. Williams, any public comment? No, sir. Call for the vote. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. Ordinances for final adoption. This is a public hearing and speaker sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the council. Again, I remind you, the three minute rule does apply. Cindy, please read. Parish Ordinance 7 2021, in honor of the Lafayette Parish Council declaring the Stutes Road Bridge Replacement Project a public necessity and authorizing the acquisition of the necessary rights of way, immovable property, and other property rights requisite to the construction of said project, either on an amicable basis or through the use of the expropriation process if necessary. Need a motion, second. Been moved by Mr. Nakan, seconded by Mr. Rubin. Any council discussion? Ms. Williams, any public comment? No, sir. Not hear any? Let's vote. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. Parish Ordinance 9-2021, an ordinance of the Lafayette Parish Council declaring the Levest Road Detention Pond Project a public necessity in authorizing the acquisition of the necessary rights of way, immovable property, and other property rights requisite to the construction of said project, either on an amicable basis or through the use of the expropriation process if necessary. Need a motion, second. Been moved by uh, Mr. Nockhans, seconded by Mr. Tabor. Any council discussion? Ms. Williams, any public comment? No, sir. Let's vote. District five? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. The motion to adopt is approved. Parish Ordinance 10 2021, an ordinance of the Lafayette Parish Council declaring the Robley Drive Detention Pond Project a public necessity in authorizing the acquisition of the necessary rights of way, immovable property, and other property rights requisite to the construction of said project, either on an amicable basis or through the use of the expropriation process if necessary. Need a motion second. Been moved by uh, Mr. Nockhans, seconded by Mr. Carlson. Any council discussion? Ms. Williams, any public comment? Yes, sir. Let's vote. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? The motion to adopt is approved. We have an appeal. Cindy, please read. Appeal of Parish Cl Planning Commission Action, Mills Crossing, case number PC 2021-0011. I would like to ask the development and planning uh, staff or director to the uh, podium to explain. Good evening, Council. I'm uh, Neil LaBeouf, the Development Manager uh, in Planning and Development. Uh, a little of a review. Uh, do I have the laptop on? Awesome. You're doing fine. All right, great. Uh, <clears throat> you may move, remove your mask while you're at the mic. Mills Crossing represents uh, approximately 20.93 acres 
uh, proposed to be subdivided into 90 residential lots. Um, <clears throat> the proposed development is located in the unincorporated parish um, adjacent to Mill Street, Vatican, and Pope Drive. The proposed subdivision was first evaluated in the Area-Wide Development Review Committee on January 20th. Uh, comments returned from ADRC uh, included a requirement for a drainage impact analysis. The proposed subdivision was then heard for preliminary platting at the Parish Planning Commission meeting on February 8th. Uh, Mr. Ricks, the development representative, provided an overview of the Mills Crossing development and the project's drainage features, Bayou Karen Crow, and three related laterals, as well as the designated flood zones. Mr. Ricks stated a drainage impact study will be provided for this development. Jessica Cornet, uh, public works engineer, spoke to the flooding issues in the area and requested the Planning Commission consider adding the requirement of a flood study as a condition of preliminary platting. <coughs> Commissioners further questioned Ms. Cornet about potential results of the flood and drainage impact studies, and if said studies indicated flooding would be worsened by Mills Crossing, would it be allowed to proceed to development? Uh, to which Ms. Cornet stated no. Additionally, Ms. Cornet indicated nearby channels and laterals to the Mills Crossing development are on the list to be cleaned, uh, but did not have a specific time frame. There were 10 speakers who voiced opposition to the proposed development, one speaker in support, and two comment cards that did not indicate a position. The Parish Planning Commission did approve Mills Crossing for preliminary plat with all conditions and added a flood study as an additional requirement. The developer did not ask for or receive any waivers of conditions. An appeal was filed on February 12th by Mr. Chris Mesh, reasoning the proposed subdivision is in an area that is prone to continuous flooding and poor drainage. <clears throat> it is important to note that preliminary plat does not in any way allow construction of the pro proposed subdivision as presented. And that's what, uh, that's the report. Okay. Thanks, um, Neil. Um, council members, any questions for Ms. Mr. Neil? Go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. LaBeouf, isn't it my, so it's my understanding that per the Lafayette Development Code, less water is going to be leaving the property, uh, putting it in layman's terms, because that's all I, I, I understand. Less water in any, from any development or new development is leaving the property compared to what it is now. Isn't it 85% outfall after well, development compared to pre-development? So there are some pre and post requirements. Um, I, I'll defer to Public Works to, to get into the technical specifications on that. I think, all right. Let, let, let me do this. Let's hold on council uh, questions, comments for now, if you, you don't do mind. That. Sure. And, and what I'd like to do is give the appellant an opportunity to speak to us so we'll have all the information before us and then we can call you up individually and ask the questions. So let's get the whole body of him. So does the appellant wish to address the, the council? The appellant could step forward and address the council. And again, please state your name and uh, position. So uh, you may come to this mic, sir. We, we alternate mics. We clean one, you use the other one. Um, my you, name is Chris. you may remove your mask also so we can better, better hear you. My name is Chris Mesh. Um, I live at 825 Pope Drive, Karen Crow. <clears throat> I, um, I, have, I have a book here that I would like to pass to the uh, councilman to look into. It's uh, pictures and, and um, just information stating showing flood in that area. If y'all wouldn't mind me handing it to y'all. You, you, may, you may give it to our clerk, uh, Ms. Williams. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Mesh. Okay. 
Um, like I said, my name is Chris Mesh. I live at 825 Pope Drive. My home is on the northwest side of the proposed subdivision. I'm here tonight representing myself and 217 other concerned citizens that signed a petition opposing the development Mills Crossing. The flooding continues to worsen as years go by. The surrounding areas around the proposed subdivision, such as Mills, Vatican, Pope, Benoit, Oak Spring subdivision, Frenchman Trail subdivision, just to name a few, <clears throat> continues to be a burden with the rising waters flooding in places that never had high water in the past. Not only do we get rising waters during the periods of heavy rains, we continue to get rising flood waters long after the rains are over. Due to the poor drainage and the undersized bayou, which is supposed to drain us out during these conditions. On the southwest side, just 150 yards from the proposed subdivision at 213A Vatican Road, the property owner received a letter on November the 12th, 2020 from the Lafayette Consolidated Government stating that the property has been identified as a repetitive loss property. The flood map shows this home is also not in a flood zone as a said property being developed, <clears throat> but has flooded multiple times. We feel with the few reasons that I've stated and the emails and testimonies of the other concerned residents around the Mills Crossing development, or above and beyond proven facts that this subdivision should be denied. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to uh, council members. Well, actually, we're we're up for uh, council discussion. All right. So we're we're on stage. Ms. Carney, I, I think there was a question that was asked earlier, if you would like to come up to the mic and address it for us. Good afternoon, Council. Yes, uh, Mr. Carlson, uh, you are correct. Whenever we have major, is this not on? Oh. It's on. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> um, we have a development larger than two and a half acres. They are required to reduce the peak runoff by 15% from the existing runoff. Um, so that is a requirement of the drainage impact analysis um, that was on the action letter. Thank you. Thank you. And so they're not just meeting the, the requirements of a drainage impact analysis, but we've asked them to perform a, a flood study, is that correct? Yes. Can you explain what's involved in that as opposed to just a drainage impact analysis? The drainage impact analysis reviews the five-year storm, um, it holds the 25-year in retention, and it is evaluated for the 100-year. A flood study looks at all of the year studies or percent chance, the 5, the 10, 25, 50, 100, and sometimes even the 500, and it basically is similar to a no-rise. Um, basically, they cannot do any harm to their neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it in layman's terms. Okay. Is it your opinion that if they perform a flood study and fulfill all the requirements of that flood study, that drainage, I mean, it, I mean as I understand it, wouldn't it improve drainage in the area, it, even if it's minimally? certainly not having an adverse effect, but minimally improve it because there is less, less water being outflowed to those channels that are adjacent to the property? Yes, occasionally we have seen some minimal improvements, um, but the basis of it is to have no adverse impact to right. the neighbors and the surrounding properties. Okay. That's all my questions. Mr. Tabor. I don't have any questions. I just want to comment. This is in my district. You, you sound, Jessica. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and, you know, I understand it, 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 it passed, the, then it was approved. But I think we need to do, look at the other issue. I, I'm with the residents. We, do we have flooding issues there already? It's just going to make it worse, in my opinion. Let's, you know, I wish there was a way we can 
put it on hold and, 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 and do all the studies first, but it doesn't appear that's the way it works. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to support my, the residents. Uh, I think this is a, again, it was approved. We don't want to, we don't want to hinder construction, but we need to look at it closer in my opinion. Thank you. Mr. Nakin. Yes, sir. Check, check. All right. Um, no, I, I, I kind of um, agree with you, Mr. Tabor. I guess the thing I need to ask uh, planning and zoning or, or Ms. Jessica, if, if you can come back. Um, it's my understanding that the requirements, it's possible that the developer can go through all that and then realize he's sitting on a piece of property that he really can't get the lots that he wants and it's probably not as profitable because if indeed the flood study comes back and the drainage study comes back and it is found that this is not the right site and the best appropriate subdivision or development, then it's possibly that it never gets off the ground. He basically says, all the requirements you're making me to do in the flood study, I mean, some of these studies can cost $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. Um, so I guess my assurance is, you know, has the developer gone through all of the checklists? And the thing is, he can't scratch the ground or break ground without assuring LCG and the planning and zoning that he has met all of those requirements. Yes. Correct? <laughs> Correct. Okay. Um, yes, we've seen some developments um, either modify their layouts, reduce the number of lots. Sometimes some developments just financially don't happen. Um, we usually don't find out about those until many months later. Right. <laughs> but um, yes, we've seen both of those uh, scenarios over the years. I can appreciate the process that we have today because I've been here for nine, ten years, and I can assure the residents that prior <laughs> years, they wouldn't even have been required to do a drainage study. They wouldn't have been required to do any of that. You know, they would have basically developed and it would have been up to the council to approve or not. But the one thing that we should all appreciate in this process is the fact that it looks scary and I understand the residents in the pictures. Thank you for sending. I mean, I, I think those, those roads were probably on TV 10 when the last Karen Crow flood happened. They were getting people out of boats in that area because that's how deep the water looks. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm with you uh, in, in that regards and the fear and we, we don't want to have our homes flood again. I guess the reassurance I can tell you is that we do have a process now that doesn't just automatically someone buys the land, puts up a plat in front of the planning commission and all of a sudden just starts building houses. I mean, uh, according to what he went through in all of the checklists, I mean, he's did everything that he's supposed to do. Uh, but that still doesn't guarantee that the project's going to exist for the simple fact that he has to meet all of these other requirements in the study. And if it doesn't meet our requirements, it won't happen. Or he'll find out that he can't get as, but 10 or 20 or 15 lots instead of the 90 that he wanted. You know, so project might not even come off the ground. All I can assure you is that it's not just a, a check off, boom, start scratching the ground. I mean, uh, he, he has to meet the requirements of, of LCG and make sure that they meet it to the fullest or the development doesn't happen. That is the best process that we have in place today. Um, it was never that way before. And uh, the one thing that I uh, respect about being a parish councilman for all these years and represented the majority of the unincorporated area was I know when development's coming, it's coming to the unincorporated area. There's only so much land in the city of Lafayette and all the municipalities. So, Developers are going to look for those fields and look for the sugar cane and, and, and those areas where they can build a subdivision. Well, we all know fields and, and farmland has held water there forever. And when you start developing on it, the fear is, well, where's all that water going to go? So it's up to our engineers and up to planning and zoning and our department to make sure that we have the right things in place to assure one, the residents next door, but also the person that has bought the land and has an investment and goes through all of these things and spends 30,000 on the study. And the, if he spends 30, 20,000, does all of these things and checks it off and all of a sudden this council denies the project and he, he basically followed the letter of the law. <clears throat> been on a council where we've been sued before and the parish gets sued because there's, he did everything right. 
And I guess what I'm saying is if the shoe was on the other foot and we were the developer, we would want to make sure we're protecting the citizens and the investment. And if neither one works, then we have to walk away from the project and it just, it just stays empty, you know? Um, so I just want to make sure I'm clear and then the residents are clear that if it were to pass, doesn't mean the project goes on means that they basically have to meet all of those requirements. And then the developer at that point, once he gets the price tag of the, the study and jump through, the, does all of those things, he, it just might not well be suitable for him to, to do that. Yes, your vote tonight would be to let it progress to, to, to design. Go through the process, or not, not, right. not necessarily be a done deal, slam dunk, but he, to, to, for the right developer the to go through all of these processes and steps in order to determine if it's a viable project. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Rubin. Uh, thank you. That's pretty much what I was gonna try to make sure that we clarify too, that even though we, no matter what we say tonight, the developer still has a long ways to go before he can put his shovel in the ground. Yes, sir. They have to go through an extensive engineering review. Um, we have a checklist that we make sure things are taken care of, and they also have to be designed by a licensed professional engineer in the state of Louisiana. Um, and there we take a, we take a you know, code, of, uh, code of ethics uh, as a professional to uh, protect life safety and property. Thanks. Jessica and, and Mr. Carlson, I'm coming to you. I, I'm going to get a word in right here. Um, there are 22 conditions and there are eight plat uh, revisions. Total of 30. All 30 must be met before we can put the shovel into the ground. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember all of the conditions. I well, think some of them are kind of more for the plat not for construction, but yes, all well, the construction Well, they're conditions, and conditions means in order to go forth, you've got to meet those conditions. Yes. Okay, so that's a workload in itself. We are talking about at least five, maybe more of those conditions that deals with drain impact studies, analysis, whatever it might be. So we've got the waterfront pretty well covered in terms of what is required in terms of the, the drainage. Yes, sir. How long uh, before we see any work done on the, the channels, the ditches that surround uh, or in that area? Many of them have been cleaned out recently and I know Bayou Karen Crow Lateral 9A is in the works right now, um, but we, we are very much aware that this area has issues um, and the drainage department has worked diligently to clean as many of those channels as we can and the drainage maintenance program has given us the opportunity to clean some of the ones that were a little bit out of the reach of our in-house okay. crews. So Jessica, any work that's done by the engineers today will be oh. done on the current conditions of those channels in those ditches? Yes, sir. We do not allow them to anticipate future conditions. It has to be designed on what's out there today. Um, as a precaution to make sure it functions. So we are talking about extensive engineering work in this case? Yes, sir. I mean, this obviously is gonna be the case. Um, can the plat be revised? And I think I did hear the, the answer to this question from 100 plus homes down to let's say 30 homes to better accommodate the, um, the issue of flooding. Yes, as the design professional goes through and uh, works the numbers and see where things work, where things perhaps don't work, um, they can reduce the number of lots uh, easily. They cannot increase the number of Correct. lots without going back to the planning commission. Okay, I heard that um, this is in a flood zone and I must... No. Oh, okay, and I, that was my question. And if, but FEMA has not done a full evaluation of that area at this point, right? Correct. The Bayou Karen Crow channel, um, the model for Bayou Karen Crow ends many miles short of this particular property. Um, the Bayou Karen Crow drainage basin is, is definitely one of the squirreliest ones we have in the parish. It goes around the parish. Um, so yes, they are in zone X. 
Um, unfortunately, that is not because it was studied and determined to be in a area of uh, minimal risk. It's basically in a flood zone X because that is de the default from FEMA. And if they have not studied an area at all, they give it a designation of X. So that does not mean that it does not have the designations or the possibility of the, the flood zone and, and so forth, the conditions. Correct. Nationally, okay. over 20% of all FEMA flood claims are from Zone X. Okay. So they have to build at base flood level plus one. They will have to determine base flood level, and then they will have to um, build plus, plus one. Plus one. Yes. We have any high idea how much dirt's going to have to be pulled in? Again, I'm assuming that we have the no-fill policy that's going to kick in as well. Well, this is technically not in a special flood hazard area, so no net fill does not directly apply to this property really? okay. under the current regulations. But because the Planning Commission did add a flood study, um, that is going to take into account kind of that swap of what they're going to dig out and what they're going to raise up. It's going to, it's, it's going to be hydraulically proven instead of just geometrically but proven. Jessica, certainly we're not going to let them start hauling in a whole lot of dirt to build up the pads and all, are we? Are we going to put them on stilts? Possibly. We, have, we would love a few more. So I get the fish off the back porch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, in the study, whenever they design it, they will have to dis determine what elevation is safe for the new homes. Obviously, we don't want to build a new subdivision where people have issues with their homes, but we also don't want to exacerbate an existing problem with anyone who lives around a development. Um, so, yes, they will probably, you know, we turtle back all of our lots generally. You want your house to be higher than the road. Um, so there will be some, and they're gonna have to dig down for the retention requirements, the drainage system, and all of that. Um, but the exact scoop for scoop of no net fill is not currently a regulation in this area. Um, but the flood study will make sure that there's no negative impact. But the, the, the flood study would indicate in terms of how much backfill they can put, I would, I would think, huh? Yes, it would, yes, it would have to be, it, it will be a, a design that basically says this elevation for five acres, this elevation for yes. three acres, and this elevation for however many. So years. all of these studies that we're going to do cannot put one drop more of water off that property onto the neighbors? Yes, sir. Okay, that's in theory, that's, that's what we're talking about. Okay. Mr. Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'd like to make a motion that we deny the appeal. I need a second. I need a second. You did? Oh, okay. It's been moved by Mr. Carlson, seconded by Mr. Knockhand, that we deny the appeal. Ms. Williams, any public comment? Yes, sir. We do have public well, comment. Excuse me. Before I get to it, uh, the mayor president has a comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very briefly, you know, I do, and I'm wait till the to the vote, but uh, or I'll defer to the vote. But I do want to tell the residents, especially the gentleman that came up to to talk and obtain the 217 signatures you mentioned. You know, that takes a lot of dedication and and commitment to not only your home but your neighborhood. So please know that that does not go unnoticed. Um, from what I'm hearing, and Councilman Nakan, I think did a really good job of explaining the, the, the process because a lot of this is is new not only in the LDC but in our former UDC too had some drainage impact uh, requirements. If the council upholds the the planning commission's um, decision, I, I really hope that y'all hone in on what Councilman Nakan said that this is there's so many more steps that have to be taken before development actually occurs and it, it may come up it may come to a point where they reduce the lots to such a degree that it's not developable or, or not profitable to develop. Um, but drainage, I, I will say, Jessica, you know, you do a great job, Neil, and all you guys in Public Works. We are all committed to preventing flooding in the homes and the buildings. And I, and I, and I'm, I think you sense the passion that Jessica brought to the microphone. She brings, it's 20 times the amount when we, when we have these meetings. So we don't take 
this lightly at all. So, but without you coming to the council, without you obtaining those signatures, we wouldn't have this dialogue. So it's, it's very appreciative. I know the council appreciates it and I know the administration appreciates it. So, so thank you for doing that. No, excuse me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor President. Mr. Nake. If there's anything that we should learn from this is when the upcoming budget comes in and obviously it's not in my district, but with the photos that they put out there, I strongly suggest improving that intersection in that area with some major capital improvements within the drainage, regardless if this development happens, because what I just saw in that photo book and the, the time the gentleman took, obviously, if anything's gonna go there in the future, I'd like to see the money go in Mr. Tabor's district and take care of that area because they deserve it, you know, regardless. And in not, in lot, there's not a lot of times that we're able to do that but with this parish council, the way we have each other's back, obviously the residents are coming to us out of fear. And if it doesn't go their way tonight, and I say go their way, it's not about, it, it's gotta be one way or the other, but even though they know they gotta go through the guidelines, there's still gonna be some fear and some, and some reaction that they're scared. But I think the right thing to do is regardless of how this goes tonight is that that area gets attention for capital projects and for, for drainage projects, you know? And uh, so I, 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 I wanna share that, you know, when you ask the council members what's on our bucket list, Mr. Tabor, I, I suggest as your friend, uh, you take care of those residents and make sure they get some capital improvements in that area. Uh, so the photos are great and that's the kind of things that the council needs to see, administration needs to see. Uh, Cause you can clean ditches and all that, that sounds all good. But if, if we're not analyzing the pipes and how much water's coming into that area, then we're not doing you guys justice. So I would like to see some, some capital improvements in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nakin. Mr. Mayor President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Nakin. Also, um, I just want to piggyback off that. This area and, and those pictures are heart wrenching. It's, it's more than, than, than we could even describe. And again, we don't take it lightly. That area from the flood, what, five, 10 years ago to even rainstorms that, that hit a certain area under certain conditions, that for whatever reason, there's a lot of water that just pours in that particular area. We are looking at it. I'm, I am glad to hear the commitment on, on capital uh, projects geared towards that particular area. Um, and I know, Mr. Tabor, we, we've, we've spoken about this even before your appeal. So uh, your councilman is working hard for you. And I, I think you know that, though. So, But um, yes, it would come with the full support of the administration. I'll tell you that. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll turn to public comments if we have some cards. Ms. Williams. We did have two citizens who signed in, did not wish to speak in opposition to the appeal. Um, we had six citizens who emailed the council office, in, and I think it's in opposition to the project, to the drainage. So, uh, so two did not wish to speak in opposition, six emailed the council in opposition. We do have six speakers signed in, the first of which is Kevin Savant, and he will be followed by Karen Savant. And, Karen, and again, our, 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 yes. yes, either one. Either one. And yeah. I'll remind you of the uh, three-minute rule, and you may remove your mask to speak. And if Karen could come up, too, so she could start right after Mr. Savant. Good, good afternoon. Sir. or Good evening. Uh, hopefully you received some of my emails that I sent to you and what I'm going to say to Mr. Carson, Mr. Nakan, and Mayor President, what's unique about this area, it, it, it's flat, it doesn't drain. We don't flood because it rains a lot. We flood because the rainwater does not drain. Mr. Ricks, who's the, the developer's engineer, and Ms. Cornet can attest to this. The drainage in this area is poor at best. It doesn't start flowing until it gets past Vatican Park which is like in the 900 block, well west of this. And that's the issue. Uh, Oak Springs and French Trail subdivision, there's no doubt about it. The Uniform Development Code, y'all have done some great work in, in instituting new conditions for development since those two, but there's no better example than those two subdivisions in this area. Those two subdivisions are less than a half mile from this proposed development. The drainage will not be improved. Ms. Cornet even said in the, the other board meeting that we'd have to dredge it and take 50 feet of property on those three laterals 
that go into the Bayou Karen Crow that meet one that gets the water out of there. That's not gonna happen. You, you can clean the ditches as much as you want, but the problem is it doesn't flow. This is a unique area. Mr. Mr. Ricks even stated this, there's 2,500 acres east of this and, and in the near vicinity of this that's just flat. It doesn't flow. We flood because it back floods. The water is stagnant and it just keeps going into the ditches. The ditches and canals can't handle it and it just starts backing up and backing up. To Mr. Carson's point, what I would like to know is, sure the development is gonna take care of all the rainwater that's coming off the roofs and the slabs, but what, what's gonna happen when, when the rest of the surrounding water starts encroaching on this development? Where is it gonna go? How is it gonna handle this? It doesn't handle it now. Um, I'm in opposition to it and I, I would hope that you would overturn or disapprove the, the, the board's preliminary plat approval. It just doesn't make sense. 15 acres of concrete in this area, and it's a unique area. I encourage you to get your hands on, have Mr. Ricks come present what he presented to you um, and listen, it, it's just a very unique area. There's other areas I guess that flood as much, but, but this is just a very unique, unique area. I live just north of it. I've been there 25 years, uh, 2012 and 2016. You can take that out of it, but three to four inches of rain, the, the streets are flooded and th th this is not gonna help. I thank you okay. for your time. I appreciate you educating yourselves because we sure did and uh, if it goes forward, you'll definitely be hearing from us. Thank you, sir. Karen, did you want to speak? Okay, she's in opposition to the drainage component of the project. Aaron Napo Jr., followed by Linda Mesh. Good afternoon. My name is Aaron Napo Jr. I live at... Uh, Mr. Napo, if you would speak into the mic so we can just pull it towards... There you go. I live at 222 Vatican Road. I live on the west side. I have 19 acres across from where the subdivision is supposed to be built. My thing is, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a drainage analysis. I can tell you, though, if you have a flat spot and you put dirt in that flat spot, that water's gonna go somewhere else. And people that have been having houses there for 20, 25 years, it's gonna come in my house. It don't take an engineer to figure that out. 22 acres of dirt, if they pick it up, any dirt they add to it, it's gonna hurt everyone in that area. It's not just the drainage crews or nothing like that. It's just the flat spot that we live on. Maybe we shouldn't have bought that, but that's how it is. Any dirt you're gonna put on that lot next to us is gonna hurt everybody around there. When you're putting sandbags to keep water out of your house, and you see people hauling dirt in next to your house, it's kind of you know, kind of hurts a little bit. You can't do nothing about it, and you know you can't dr drain the coolies and all that because it just backs up. The water coming off of the subdivision is not a problem. It's the water coming back from by your care red hurts. So if y'all build up that area. With any kind of dirt, they're gonna have a lot of houses gonna flood in that area. They may not have flooded before, but they will now, I guarantee you. So that's all I have to say is please think about what I'm telling y'all. It's not about just the analysis and the drainage soup, whatever they look at. It's about adding dirt to a low lying area that's gonna divert the water somewhere else on our property, in our homes. That's that's the whole thing that we're kind of concerned about. It's the backflow, not the water that runs off. They can do all the studies they want on the runoff. It's not that. It's the backflow that's going to hurt. Any other dirt that's hauled in over there. Thank you all for your time. Man. Thank you, sir. Linda Mesh, followed by Al Roger. Okay. Um, I've been living in my house at 825 Pope Drive. Most of the pictures are by home. I built my house 17 inches higher in 1999 than standard requirements. You're talking about building mills up higher, mills crossing? I'm right next door. You will be flooding me because my water flows to them. And then from there, it backs up. It's not just about the roads flooding. Our yards are flooding. And then uh, me, um, Pope Drive, when they just redid it about eight years ago, they had like the dirt, they were having problems, and they put like this concrete thing in, and our road is already higher. 
It used to not, the water used to not cover the roads. Today, it's starting to flow over the road in front of my house. At the corner of the stop sign, it would, it would go over the road. But now, it's, I don't know, the water is backing up, it's increasing. And I don't know if y'all realize, Oak Subdivision is the subdivision that is always on the news with the water. And I have pictures in the back of that photo albums from um, Oak Springs, which is August of 2020. You can see it's still flooded. They're still building homes. You also mentioned the developer. They care about us. I disagree because I went in Frenchman's um, trail, I call it creek all the time, um, when they were building a house and it was blacking out and the garage was open. I've seen 18 to two feet of water in that garage. Today that house is still, they, they finished building it and that is the worst house in that subdivision. Go, all on the side is sandbags. So I don't think developers care about the people who buys their homes or the people that live around there. It's about the profit, take it and leave, and leave us the expense of flooding. I don't have water in my house yet. It's close. It keeps coming up higher. More water comes every year. So, and the water, like the backflow, it drains, it goes to the bayou, it stops, and it just keeps coming back. There's nowhere to go. So you can't, I mean, I don't see them fixing this until they dredge out the Karen Crow Bayou to give it more area to drain. Also, we have barricades up, the parish should know, because you have to get a work order to put up barricades. This is a hot spot, a flooded hot spot. So I hope y'all reconsider and don't pass this. Thank you, Ms. Mesh. Next speaker. Al Roger, followed by the final speaker, Jimmy Rick. How y'all doing, Council? Fine, sir. Um, my main concern right now is I just hope this governing body doesn't do the same mistake they did for Oak Springs. I went in there and tried to explain them what was going to happen, and they well told me I didn't know what I was talking about. We worked that property years ago. We, had, we ran cattle on that property. The reason we got out of that back property was because it would flood. They told me that, I think the city engineer was Mr. Larry Broussard at the time. He told me it was gonna take 17 inches of rain to flood that. That's false information. You get four inches of rain and they're out. You know, these people in Oak Springs, they don't get to finish repairing the damage that's done from one flood when another one comes in. I live at 133 Dillon. I used to never have water coming up on our route. It's coming up there. And to Mr. Uh, Mayor uh, Gillery's thing, a lot of the water problem is, I'm gonna tell you what it is, they came and they dredged, not dredged, they dug it, from Mills all the way to Dillon. This was to satisfy the people, make the people in Oak Springs think they were doing something. What they did right here is made a retention pond from Dillon, uh, or Mills to Dillon. Because what happens, the water leaves Dillon coming to Mills. It comes quick. It's coming from this way. When it gets there, it's backing up back to Oak Spring, and then it's heading up Mills. I run cattle about, I guess, uh, on the corner of Benoit and, and Vatican Road. I run cattle there. And I was in 17 in the water up to here. And it's not if it's going to happen again. It will happen. And... These houses, these people are gonna get, get burnt. And I wouldn't want the council to make, if I'd have been a council member in that in time on the city planning zoning committee, I'd feel bad because I gave them the right to do this and said it wasn't. And you know, actually it's not said we're in a flood zone, but we actually are in a flood zone right here. It's, I don't care how you look at it. And a lot of it is the drainage, but you can't go in the middle of a, a pasture, give you an example, in the middle of a pasture, dig here and not open this side and that side. Where the water's gonna come, it's gonna come right back. And Mill Street is actually a canal now when it rains. I was born and raised in that area and we ran cattle on that property all the time. The road would flood, that I grant. But now you get two inches of rain, 
the property has water on it. This, this, this subdivision will be in a bind. And it's, it's not that I'm against a subdivision, it's just I see what happened to the people in Oak Springs. And this is exactly what's going to happen again right here. I thank you all and hope for you all can. Thank you, sir. Final speaker, Jimmy Rick. Hello, I'm here on behalf of the, of the landowner and <clears throat> like a lot of them said, we, we presented some information at the planning commission meeting, uh, just kind of explaining the drainage in the area. And we are in the process of evaluating all those things. We started the flood study that was required by Public Works. Uh, initial flood study indicated to me that it was pretty clear maybe 90 lots would not be feasible. So the, so the owners asked us to evaluate what's afforded him in the, in the ordinance to reduce and see what, what is feasible. So we had some legwork done trying to evaluate some drainage problems in the air. So we were able to utilize that information to, to begin the flood study. And we have an inundation map prepared. So with that inundation map, we're able to evaluate the field, what you were, you were questioning Jessica about. Uh, one of the speakers worried about building up fill here. We're gonna have to create that, that storage void. Uh, it's obvious it's gonna take more than the 20% that was originally allocated for the property, which means a significant reduction in lots if it is able to be developed. The owner just asked that he be able to continue to do what's afforded him in the ordinance and go through the process. Have any other questions, technical questions for? Thank you, Jim. Okay. No other speakers, Mr. Chair. No other Chair. speakers. Coming your way, sir. Mr. Go ahead, Chair. Mr. Mayor President. Mr. Chair, briefly, briefly, if I could ask Mr. Ricks one or two questions that might help the council. While you're walking up, I'll, I'll ask Mr. Ricks. So you, you represent the, the owner of the property, correct? Yes. Okay, so if it goes to the process, if the council um, finds that the LDC would require uh, to not grant the appeal, the owner or the developer continues to go through the process, they make a decision, it's not worth developing. Um, I would ask that you talk to the, to the owner as I discuss capital projects with the council and we maybe come back together. Because if, if that property is prone to help these, these folks with drainage, because that's what I'm hearing loud and clear, I'm hearing the support of a council for capital projects to help it. This may be an area where we could have some synergy and help people. Um, but, you know, I know you're not in a position to answer that right well, now. Well, so. it, it, it's obvious it's an area that needs help. Uh, we, we, we weren't running for that. We faced that. And in, in, in my position, we're trying to present science and facts and try to be independent of the emotion and the feeling. And seeing all the pictures, our science does back up what some of the pictures show, the flood water is higher than the FEMA maps show it to be. Um, so as they've stated, the water drains from over by Pelican Park some three, four miles away and two, three, four hours after the rain event, it's still meandering through all of that portion of area, Karen Crow, and it gets here and Bayou Karen Crow is not draining, so it essentially acts as a dam. So as the water comes in, and it can't go out, it builds up. So it needs some, some collection basins for, for floodwaters to store. So we've done some initial looks at that just to see what can be done. And, and I think they can have, they, there are some ideas that could help in that area. And, and, and I'm glad both Mr. Knock and Mr. Tabor brought that up. I just ask that you have those discussions with the, the okay. owner of the property. I'll continue to talk to our council and and hear from, hear from the public and see if we can find some ways to help these folks. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion from the council members? At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Escott to clarify our motion and what the vote would mean. Mr. Escott. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The, the motion on the floor is a motion to deny the appeal, which means that if uh, you vote yes to that motion, it approves the Planning Commission's decision of granting preliminary plat approval and the project would go forward. If you vote no, uh, 
then it, uh, it would depend on what the vote is. But yes, vote allows the development to go forward. Thank you, sir. Any uh, questions from the, the council? Process, right. Any questions from the council members? In terms of what Mr. Escott just said, we understand. Mr. Nockham. Just to be clear, the process, not the project going forward. Right. Right. Correct. All right. Okay. Mr. Rubin. And I'm pretty much where, you, where Mr. Nockham is at right now as well. This is my first time voting on something as so. And I'm feeling the residents. I'm also feeling the, uh, the developers. And I know we have issues about trust, trust issues, <clears throat> but I give the benefit of the doubt on the first go round. So we're gonna hopefully trust that the process is done properly and we do right by the people, no matter how the vote goes on tonight. So I just want to share that with everyone, my, uh, my opinion on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. Any other comments from the council? Call for the vote. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District one? No. The motion to deny the appeal is approved. Announcement of vacancies on boards commissions. Cindy, please read. A vacancy exists on the Lafayette Waterworks District South Board as of April 1st, 2021. This is a one year term. Applicants must be district residents. Individuals wishing to submit a resume for the above volunteer vacancies must be a registered voter and a resident of Lafayette Parish. Your yearly ethics training for all appointees is required as is financial disclosure under certain circumstances. Resumes are to be forwarded to Veronica L. Williams, Clerk of the Council, P.O. Box 4017-C, Lafayette, Louisiana 70502, or email to bclafayette at lafayettela.gov, no later than noon, Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021, with appointments to be made at the April 6, 2021 regular meeting of the Lafayette Parish Council. Resume submissions are public record. And as a reminder, item number 13 has been deferred, item number 13. Consider appointments by the council as a whole to boards, commissions. Cindy, please read. Appointment to the Lafayette Civil Service Board for a four-year term, if at the February 1st, 2020, this nomination is listed, this nomination, nomination list provided by Ashram in Lyou of Louisiana State University. I need uh, nominations. Mr. Tabor. I nominate Zyler. Zyla has been nominated. Any other nominations from the council? Any other nominations? Did, did you announce the nominees? No, I did not. And I will do that at okay, this point. Thank you. Julie Broussard, Kylie Bungie, mm -hmm. Mashita Gibbons, Andrea Abair and James Zyler are the candidates. My apology. All right, so we have James Zyler that has been nominated. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Council discussion on Mr. James Zyler? Not hearing any. Ms. Williams, public comment? Yes, sir. Call for the vote. District 3. District 4. James Zyler. District 5. James District 1. James District 2. Yes. James Zyler is appointed. Joint introductory ordinance. Cindy, please read. Joint Ordinance 12 2021, a joint ordinance of the Lafayette City Council and the Lafayette Parish Council, declaring the Homewood Drive Detention Pond Project a public necessity and authorizing the acquisition of the necessary rights of way, immovable property, and other property rights requisite to the construction of said project, either on an amicable basis or through the use of the expropriation process if necessary. 
I need comments from the public concerning the above introductory ordinance. Ms. Williams. I'm going by the notes that have been handed to me. Is that correct, Ms. Williams? Am uh, I yeah, ask for a motion and a second. I need a motion and second. Motion, motion by Mr. Nockham. Seconded by Mr. Rubin. All right, we have a motion and second. Council discussion. Any council discussion? Ms. Williams, public comment. Yes, sir, we do have five speakers signed in for this item, the first of which is Wayne Colvin, and he will be followed by Ed Abel Jr. Well, Wayne Colvin is first. <laughs> Yeah, you can stay here, Mr. Uh, Abel. You can. Mr. Abel, you, you may stay stand at this mic if you want. And you may lower your mask when you're, you're speaking to us so we can hear you. Good afternoon, Wayne Colvin, 105 Woodward Drive, Lafayette. I live in Riverwood subdivision. Uh, I've communicated to many of you uh, regarding my thoughts and I've talked to some of you in discussions and, and emails and uh, I've done a lot of research on this and I've had to pull it by talking to people, trying to set up meetings, doing walking the, uh, the canal, driving my car into Vermillion Parish trying to find out the drainage because this project takes water from the uh, Ile de Cons that may drain so much of Western and Northern Lafayette and it hits the river and you want to take the crest of the river and dump it into the east side of the river over into these detention ponds that is on Homewood Drive that are adjacent to the property of Riverwood subdivision where I live and many other residents, residents live. Um, this is a study uh, it has no background because it was so the details are not there. The engineering has not been done, and it seems like we're trying to get public uh, requisition for it before we know what's really going on. Um, I uh, I think there's a, there's a problem because not only does it drain property from Western Lafayette and North all the way from Scott, but it drains a significant part of a million parish, some 30,000 acres. I drove it to look at the tributaries, Granger's Canal, and those coolies that drain into it. And they're building subdivisions just like we build subdivisions in the rural areas. You go down Johnson Street, cross over the bridge at Maurice, and right down the left, you see a large subdivision going in. There's some on both sides of 92. We're dumping the water on the east side of the river. There's no model that it, we've ever experienced that says take water from one side of the river and dump it on the other. Uh, there's vacant land when you look at photo shops to say, hey, uh, there's other sites that we can take water further up the cons and lessen the flow of the water down so it doesn't hit so much. I've talked to people that are more knowledgeable about this, hydrologists and civil engineers that say the water capacity that these ponds can hold will not be sufficient to drop the water level in the river more than two or three, four inches maybe at best. So this is not gonna cause a specific one. It could open our area up for more potential flooding, which we don't really have a problem for now. Um, then it would create a maintenance things. Who's gonna maintain the levee? Who's gonna maintain the inflows and the outflows? Who's going to, what we're going to do with the health hazards that these problems create. Mr. Yeah. Colvin, your time. Next speaker is Ed Hi. Abel Jr. and he will be followed by Douglas Kuntz. Good evening. And yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Mayor, Ed Abel, I represent uh, the Bendel Partnership. I'm a member of the Honor Law Firm. We've represented Bendel interest for many years. And the uh, Bendel Partnership owns uh, 370 acres, which are apparently identified as the property at interest here to use for uh, flooding relief. And Ms. Uh, Lisa Rostat is here from Houston uh, representing the Bendel Partnership. We're not opposed to the operation. We need to know a lot more information than 
we've seen so far, but I want to assure the council that we are uh, available here in Lafayette, ready to sit and talk, and we need to see the flats, how much property you need, and uh, how much you're willing to pay for it. So those are the matters of interest to us, and we will, we, we're here when you're ready to talk, and uh, so call us, and thank you. Thank you, Ms. Table. Yeah. You told me you could do it within three minutes, and you sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Douglas, Next speaker. Douglas Coons, uh, followed by Bob Hammond. Good evening. My name is Doug Kuntz. I live at 202 Oak Brook Boulevard, which is just north of the proposed um, tension pond. My biggest concern is uh, for the 16 flood, which was naturally a once in a lifetime flood. Um, the water that we had in our subdivision, <clears throat> uh, fortunately, well, for me, uh, I didn't I didn't receive water in my house. My neighbor did and many others uh, in the areas where it's low, uh, unfortunately got water. Uh, my experience being in construction for 25 years and developing retention ponds for a lot of these uh, shopping centers and businesses and stuff, my experience is the uh, lack of um, maintaining them and seeing the flooding that we get from uh, just thunderstorms, flash floods, where when you, be, you know, when, when you're gonna go in and I'm assuming, you know, dig down, you're changing the dirt, the, the normal saturation rate um, of, of that property. So as of now, <clears throat> with the rain that we get, <clears throat> and since 2016, uh, the city has, and the Lafayette Consolidated Government, the parish part, has cleaned some canals that, are, that, are, that, are, that drain our subdivision, and it, and it has helped, but on the adverse side of that, uh, we get 20, 30 minute hard rain showers and we have rivers in our roads that, you know, I've lived there for five years. The first uh, year and a half almost uh, that I lived there <clears throat> had zero issues. And the 16 flood happened and it's like it just, I don't know if it plugged up culverts, plugged up uh, catch basins, um, but it just seems like now we can't even handle a, a 30 minute shower without pulling your hair out because the water comes up almost to your front doorstep. Um, my, my, like I said, again, my biggest concern is, is just being that I've done this my whole life, uh, 25 years uh, as an adult, um, I, I just don't have the faith, uh, with no disrespect, I have no faith in the, in the parish's ability to maintain these ponds because most people don't know this, but <laughs> uh, uh, Kali Saloon has been lowered almost four to five foot to be used as a retention pond to not flood the neighborhoods from 2016 from all you know from the water they had they saw that well we can use this to get water out of neighborhoods and on the streets and I think it's a great idea not many people know that same thing they did to Verrott School Road they dropped it a lot of people don't know Ambassador Caffrey that's why it floods all the time when it was built it was built at, at, to be used as a retention pond um, so uh, I just don't see the point uh, for what Mr. Wayne was saying. You bring in all this water from the east, uh, west side to the east side, it makes absolutely no sense. I have offices on the river in both Abbeville and Lafayette, and when we flood, Abbeville doesn't flood. So Thank you, sir. The, the drainage, it just it doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. Appreciate Bob, the comments. Bob Hammett, followed by the final speaker, Harold Shuffler. Good evening, councilmen, uh, and uh, you know, men here, we're no women, but anyway. Um, my name is Bob Hammock, 411 Beverly Drive. I've spoken numerous times uh, to this body concerning flooding issues. And my uh, point, since I only have three minutes, that I want to make in an overall sense is detention ponds are expensive, and you get very, very, you get almost minimal, nominal, zero benefit from them, okay? We have natural features in the Tesh Vermilion watershed that are d large detention areas. Two of them are, the two biggest ones are Lake Foss Point and Cypress Island Swamp. 
Lake Foss Point, when the, when the Corps of Engineers built the western wall of the levee for the uh, Chafalaya Basin, they purposefully left Lake Foss Point on the west side of it to allow that to be used for drainage and retention. Cypress Island Swamp is 100,000 acres of land. It's now blocked off because when they dredged the river in the 1950s, they created spoil banks. And they, uh, uh, the, when the water flows north, it can't get into Cypress Island quickly enough. You would open up 100,000 acre, acre feet of retention in Cypress Island Swamp if you would just knock down those spoil banks. Could probably be done for less than a million dollars, okay? You, now here we have this Homewood project. You want to spend $35 million on 2,500 acre feet, or yeah, 2,500 acre feet of detention, and at a cost of $14,000 an acre. If you did an apples to apples comparison of Cypress Island Swamp in terms of the amount of 100,000 acres at $14,000 an acre, it'd be $1.4 billion. So if you want to try to dig your way out of this problem rather than use the natural retention that's already there and is a beautiful, elegant, simple economic solution, you can go ahead and spend $1.4 billion. But as a taxpayer, as a citizen, I'm vehemently opposed to such a totally irresponsible and wasteful use of public money. Um, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Final speaker, Harold Shuffler. First of all, I want to thank you all for addressing this flood issue. Our concern that this, the program you're putting before us is not very much of a solution. We oppose this totally. It's a big loss of farmland, most of the keem land, but it's not only the 250 acres that you're taking to make the pond. You gotta deal with putting four or five million acres of dirt somewhere. That'll be on somebody else's farm. And probably most of the clay will never grow keen or rice or anything like that. So it's just horrendous waste. It's a project that will need core permits, at least two. You're going to have to backflow into these things, which means you have control gates. Somebody's going to have to pay for that and maintain them. You've got to keep them empty. It means the willows and the, the chicken trees and all will grow like crazy. Somebody's going to have to keep that cut or it won't act as a retent. You've got a fiscal issue to deal with. You have, if you look at that project, and all the other retention ponds we have in Lafayette, you're only looking at 4,000 surface acre feet. The flood that came through in 016 was 291,000 surface acre feet. If you have all these ponds empty and the big rain camps, you're allowing the water in the might less than an inch. You just don't go there with a five gallon bucket and start bailing. The difference won't be measurable. This is a waste of money, a waste of resources. We have a lot better things to do for a lot less money. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, before I give a few few thoughts here, I do uh, want to say thank you to Mr. Scheffler and I see my man Tommy Gilbo back there and Mr. Wayne, Dave. I'm probably missing a few, Mr. Abel, everybody that took the time to, to come out here. Um, I learned a lot. In the, in the campaign for this position. And I think you guys, some of you guys, if not all of you guys did as well, from these gentlemen that came, took the time to come and talk today. And, you know, and I didn't have a public works department to go and ask questions to or civil engineers or hydrologists or all that good stuff. So I'm, I am very much personally thankful for these gentlemen. Just not even for coming tonight, just for what you do, okay? Um, just a few thoughts. Cypress Island, um, could not agree with you more. The only, there's a couple issues there that we are working through and it's heavily on our radar. The, my, my other friend here, you're, you're absolutely correct. That is, if you're gonna do a detention in this parish 
or in this region, I cannot think of a bigger pond that would, or a bigger, bigger project that would help us in, in lowering the water levels in the Test Vermilion watershed. You are absolutely spot on. And it is as simple as removing the spoil banks, okay? So we are working on the design, but we do have a partner in that because a lot of that water would go into St. Martin Parish. So we are, I'm talking to President Cedars, who is uh, very uh, welcoming to this idea. Uh, he's talking to his parish council, our public works department, uh, Mr. Navos in the audience right now they've already communicated with st. Martin's uh, public works director in their department uh, and not only would it benefit Lafayette and the test vermilion watershed and all that good stuff there's some other engineering that can happen in the swamp that would actually help st. Martin Parish as well so it's a, it's a really a lot of synergy so cannot support this project enough so that's to the northern part of our parish as far as Homewood to the southern part of our parish this is one of many possible projects, and this particular step is one step of a of, of many that could be required or will be required. Uh, the gentleman mentioned the Corps of Engineers. They're not going to issue a permit if the science is not there. Our, our own public works department is not going to allow us to go forward if the science and engineering is not there. I won't let us go forward if I'm not convinced through people that have been to school and trained in this area or in addition to having feedback from the public until we, or until we're at that point. So on that note, um, this is on intro. This is a necessity ordinance only. It's one of many, many steps that would have to be, that would have to occur. And we don't even know if this project could be uh, bedded out to, to be a solution, but it's worth looking into. And I, and I think you guys, if I know the spirit of Dredge of Vermilion, there's no harm in looking into this. Uh, lastly, and uh, I hope I don't steal your thunder, Councilman, but the Council, Councilman Carlson, who represents this area, is doing a fantastic job. Uh, We've been working with the residents. So this Tuesday night, we'll have a town hall in that area. And I, I, anybody that's attending, I don't want you to feel pressured that you have to get all the questions answered because we may not have all the answers that night. So hopefully it's one of many that we do to further the dialogue, to further the discussion, but it can't hurt to look into this and it may help. And we can't look into it further without the necessity ordinance. So I appreciate the council's consideration. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any further discussion from the council? Ms. Williams, uh, call for the vote. Yes, sir. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. The motion to introduce is approved. Okay, thanks. I was just advised by our, our attorney that, uh, again, according to our rules, um, we, we meet for an hour and a half, and it looks like we're going to exceed the one and a half hours. So I will need a motion to surpass that by 30 minutes. I'll entertain a motion. Been moved by Mr. Nakes, seconded by um, Mr. Tabor, that we extend our meeting by 30 minutes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposition? Not hearing any, so ordered. At this time, we'll turn to uh, comments from the public. Uh, and again, this is a time period when you can speak to any item that is not or was not on the agenda for this evening. Anything but what's on the agenda. So, Ms. Williams, um, again, I'll remind you that there is a three-minute uh, rule. Uh, no debating or confrontational statements or personal attacks will be allowed. Um, we do have others uh, that will want to speak. So, again, I, I reiterate the three-minute rule. Um, Ms. Williams? We have any speakers? Yes, sir, we do. We have two speakers, the first of which is Sharon Glover, and she will be followed by Loomis St. Julian. Good evening, my name is Sharon Minix Glover. Uh, I reside at 100 Blossom Circle in Karen Crow, and I can. Um, first, I wanna say thanks to um, Mr. Joseph Garden Wilkes, who's been very patient with me since October of, uh, September of 20. I've been calling him about the address of 2901 West Gloria Switch. 
I just sent some pictures around. It's a sore eye. We started to see uh, rodents. Uh, there's a young man bought a house there about three and a half years ago. We've attempted to talk to him. Now there's probably about seven or eight cars. There's riding lawnmowers um, with trees falling on top. Um, environmental control and development and planning have come out. Those cases have been closed. Uh, the most recent update I received this week is that we have someone reviewing the ordinance again for sore eyes and you know what can we do and I totally get that and I understand everything takes time when we have someone new in place but there again I've been living there 25 years I have a home there there's people elderly people who have been there longer and they're afraid of the rooms they're afraid that it may be some possible drug activity they're getting very concerned it's on the main street of Gloria switch um, we, we've tried talking to the young man. I actually tried to talk to him on yesterday. Uh, I was going to try to resolve it, you know, as part of the community. Basically, he said, you know, this is my property. I'm not starting a business, and I do what I want. So I just don't know where we can go with this. I appreciate any support with urgency. I've been very patient since October, uh, you know, to try and get some help. But appreciate anything, so, you know, Sergeant St. Julia here has been very helpful. He's tried to also speak to the young man. There's a lot of elderly people who wanted to come because they're walking with walkers now. Of course, they could not come out this evening. I uh, left some messages also for you, Mr. Nakan, to see how you can help us in this. It's like he's saying it's not a business, but it's, it's getting pretty bad. If you look at the pictures, by, I left, went out of town on Saturday. By the time I came back, there was three or four more trailers and cars that were backed up against my fence. Uh, and he sees nothing wrong with it. I mean, I could, I could spend two grand and put a fence, but it's not going to stop the rodents. My neighbor shared with me this morning while I was out for a walk. He said, I saw two field rats coming across the street. Um, like I said, they've come out. Sheriff departments have been out there. I think they suspect something, but they're also now starting to sit. They pulled the a storage shed against the, my fence. They're sitting in there, and there's some kind of conjugation going on there. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's... It's, you know, platonic, if it's neutral conversation. I don't know if he's just a hoarder. I can't tell you anything about the young man, but it's <coughs> concerning and alarming being in a community for so long to see your property just depreciate. So I thank you all for your time and hopefully that we can take some action. I look at the cases that have been closed already and hopefully you can help us. Thank you. Thank you. The pictures. Good evening, Council. My yes. name is Loomis St. Julian. I am a retired.